So it's actually great timing to have you on the show because I uh, recently, actually uh, seven days ago, decided to become a vegan. So this is now my my eighth day of uh, of trying to be a vegan, and um, you know it's it's been somewhat challenging. Actually, not as hard as as uh, I think some people might think. Um, just kind of avoided hamburgers, basically. You know, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that I've I, Kind of personally struggled with, and I was hoping maybe you could, um, you know, shed some light on or help me understand better is the the subject of honey, because I understand you know eggs and uh, and milk like factory farming how that you know affects uh, cows and chickens, but um, as far as you know bees and honey for some reason just in, in instinctively that seems a little different to me. So I'm just wondering uh, if you could kind of share what your take is on on honey. Is that abusive to bees, or I mean they they produce honey uh, anyway, right? Well, yes, it is abusive to bees, and that was a revelation to me too when I first became a vegetarian and then later a vegan. And I actually heard a wonderful talk by a woman in Pennsylvania who said, do you know anything about honey production? Of course, so who does? And so she described it, and there was a book about honey production that she showed me. And what they do is they factory farm bees. And we all know, you know, bees dance, they can find direction, they protect their hive, they create honey to nourish themselves, just as the way they also make propolis as a, basically an antibiotic for the hive. They're extremely clever and complex, and we really don't know that much about what makes them tick. But she said, what, when they're ready to get the honey, they smoke the bees out, and many of the bees die, and they those who succumb to the smoke and who fall onto the ledge outside the hive are scraped away with a bee brush, which tears off their legs and their wings. And the hive suffers greatly. Um, what they do is then steal the honey so we can use it. And we have other sweeteners we can use, so why do that? But there were many more things that she discussed, like shipping the hives to um, Florida in the winter if from northern countries where it's colder and many of the bees die there. And also now we know that bees need to be left alone because they're disappearing from the face of the earth because of chemicals and human intervention. So I thought, well, I can eat agave, I can put sugar in my coffee, <laughs> I can do other things. And so for extra credit, uh, you can just skip honey. And a lot of vegans just want to say to people, look, you don't need to take anything from animals in order to live a healthy and good life. Hmm. So just in principle, we don't do it. So also in terms of bees, as I understand it, they play a role in uh, pollinating vegetables as well. I, I believe uh, perhaps avocados. Um, but you know, I, I recently planted a garden and my mother advised you know, planting uh, flowers around it so that bees will, will pollinate them. Is that exploitative of bees as well? No, that's fine, because they're benefiting from it too. And the fact is that we have raised so many meadows and areas where they used to get their nutrients, their pollen, um, that it's a benefit to them. No, that's fine. The big problem is chemical pesticides, things like that, which are causing them to get sick and to die and not to reproduce. And then that also got me just wondering about manure. Um, do you think that manure is exploitative to, to cows to use that? Well, the thing is, where are you getting the manure from? And if you're getting it from farming, then it means that the animals are being raised to either be slaughtered in almost immediately or slaughtered at a young age or raised for milk, which is even worse because mm -hmm. although people say, Oh, well, they don't kill the cow. Yes, they do. There are no retirement homes for dairy cattle. You know, right. they all go down the same slaughter ramp that the so-called beef cow does. Only they're older. They're probably sick. They may have pink eye or mastitis. They're not feeling great when they get kicked down the ramp. But in the meantime, they've had their babies taken away every single time they've gone through a pregnancy. Usually they've been artificially inseminated. So the, the exploitation, I think, is the animals being used that produce the manure that then you use. So it will depend. Mm. 
Yeah, you know, uh, on the subject of cows, it's it's funny because uh, just growing up, I hated milk. I, I despised milk, but it was so funny how my um, both my parents were divorced. They would both force milk on me. And I remember even uh, just to, at, I remember one time specifically like knocking the milk over on the table, pretending it was an accident just so I didn't have to drink it. Um, and I have to just imagine so many, so many kids are brought up, you know, being told you have to drink your milk, you have to eat your meat to get the protein. Um, what do you think are, are really the most common misconceptions that, that people have about nutrition and uh, animal products? Well, most people haven't a clue about nutrition. And as you say, they grow up being told you must drink your milk, you must eat your meat or you won't grow big and strong. And of course, all we're doing when we hear that or when we say that is parroting the advertising of the dairy and meat industries because it's not true and i think one of the most common misconceptions is about dairy because we're not baby cows and cow's milk is meant for baby cows who grow very fast have extremely long legs uh, they're full of hormones from that milk our children, human children, don't need that hormone dose, that massive hormone dose you get in cow's milk. Um, also, people think, oh, well, where will you get your calcium? People still ask me that today. And I think, oh, Lord, um, actually, calcium from cow's milk is the least digestible form of calcium you can ingest. And in fact, too much calcium, which was shown by this massive nurses, nurses study out of Harvard, will cause you to break bones. The people who drink the most milk have the most broken bones that don't heal well. The best form of calcium, and you do need calcium, comes from green leafy vegetables like kale and spinach and so on. And it's totally digestible. And also from nuts like almonds. Now, those are all great sources of calcium, but what we don't need is cow's milk, and the cows don't need us to take the milk that's meant for their children either. <laughs>